I'm going to be going over the least risk category of ETFs to the most risky category of ETFs, in my opinion. Now, again, you want to make sure you always do your own due diligence. Never blindly listen to a random guy on YouTube. None of these ETFs are things that I'm recommending that you should buy. It's just something that you want to be paying attention to and things that you can consider buying. And then you do your own research. So let me start by talking about number one, which is the S&P 500 ETF. And a couple examples of this would be VOO or SPY. Now, quick disclaimer, I own shares of VOO. So the S&P 500 ETF is an index. This is a group of 500 companies, the 500 biggest companies on the stock market. So when you invest in VOO or SPY, you're investing in all 500 of those companies. Now, if you were to go onto the Vanguard website and you look at the riskiness of this ETF, what you'll see is that it's on the more risky side of the scale rather than the least risky side of the scale. So why am I saying that this is the least risky way to go? Well, when I'm talking about ETFs today, I'm talking about ETFs that invest in equities, meaning ETFs that invest in stocks. I'm not talking about the ETFs that invest in bonds. Bonds have their own risks right now, especially when you're worried about high inflation and potential defaults. So I'm not gonna be talking about bonds. I'm talking about ETFs that invest in stocks, that invest in companies. So this is the ETFs that invest in the biggest 500 companies on the stock market. And this is a lower risk ETF because, well, you're getting exposure to the biggest companies in America. The second kind of ETF that you can consider investing your money in is a total stock market ETF. Now, in my opinion, this is a little bit more risky investment than just investing in the S&P 500. An example of this would be something like VTI, another Vanguard ETF. And the reason why I say that this is slightly riskier than the biggest 500 companies in the stock market is because this is investing in pretty much every company in the stock market. This is something like 4,000 plus companies that this ETF invests in. And so if we were to go into a deeper recession, well, what's gonna happen? Well, you're gonna see companies go do layoffs, you're gonna see companies go bust. And so this is investing in most of the companies in the stock market, all 4,000 some companies in the broader stock market here. Well, a percentage of them are gonna go bankrupt and you're gonna have exposure to more companies here versus I would say that you'd have a smaller percentage of the S&P 500 companies going bankrupt. But if you're just looking for a way for you to get broad exposure to the entire stock market, this is an easy way for you to do that. Now, there are other ETFs that track this. I'm just a fan of Vanguard because Vanguard has been around a long time. They're one of the companies that create these types of ETFs. So Vanguard created VTI. So you can find the right one for you. I just like Vanguard because of well, their reputation. The thing that you also wanna be aware of when you're investing your money into these ETFs, not not only is what ETF that you're investing in, but when you buy. Because a mistake that a lot of people make when it comes to investing their money into stocks or ETFs, especially when you're in a downwards market, is trying to time the market. And so a lot of people try to play this game where they wanna get the bottom. They wanna catch the market, the ETF, the stock right at the bottom, that way they can get the best share price and there's no way for you to perfectly predict or time the market. So what happens to a lot of people is to try to time the market and they either buy too early or they buy too late and then the market goes up and then they miss the opportunity to buy. Consumer staples are things that people need. These would be things like soap, hygiene products, food, drinks, alcohol, even tobacco is considered a consumer staple. And so if we were to go into a recession and people have to stop spending money on things like luxury items and designer name products, well, they're still gonna need your consumer staples. People still need food, they still need drinks, they still need other things that you use in your daily life, soap. And these are the companies that these ETFs invest in. And a couple examples of this will be something like XLP and VDC. VDC is the Vanguard one, and XLP is another consumer staples ETF. XLP is a very popular one. This is arguably the most liquid consumer staples ETF. There's a lot of activity with this one, meaning there's a lot of volume, a lot of people own this one. VDC is the Vanguard version of this. Both of these ETFs invest in consumer staples companies. There's a lot of overlap there, but you're gonna see some difference in ownership of certain companies, and you're gonna see some different companies between these two ETFs. So what you can do is just go onto any financial news website, go onto Yahoo Finance, go anywhere else, entering these two ETFs, and then you can see the different companies that they invest in and what ratio, and you can pick which one you like better. Do your research, but these are ETFs that give you exposure to those consumer staples. And if you wanna know some of the historical data behind these type of consumer staples ETFs, back when the 2008 crash happened, 
these types of consumer staple companies were hurt. They were hurt hard, but they were hurt less hard than a lot of the other major ETFs. So again, if you're worried about a potential crash, you're worried about a recession, and you're wondering what type of ETFs that you can potentially invest in to help protect your money in the past, especially during the 2008 crash, what we saw was that consumer staple companies were hurt, but not as bad as some of the other companies. The fourth category of ETFs that I wanna talk about are getting a little bit more on the risky side, and this one has to do with more of a protectionary ETF. If you're worried about the United States economy, you're worried about the United States dollar, then you can consider investing your money into something like an emerging market ETF, because these are ETFs that invest in companies that are not in the United States. So now, not only are you diversifying companies, but you're also diversifying economies and currencies, because now you're investing in countries like China and India and Korea and Brazil and Japan and so now you're diversifying your money around the world into companies that are growing in economies that are growing in currencies that are not as stable as the United States dollar but if these countries are growing and that currency becomes more stable you can see more upside but it also is more speculative and more risky because well these countries aren't as established and they're not as stable as the United States and the dollar is still the world world's reserve currency. A couple examples of this would be S-C-H-E and V-W-O. This is a Charles Schwab ETF. This is a Vanguard ETF. I have my money invested into these ETFs as a disclaimer. And again, both of these ETFs are investing in one, different countries, second, different companies. So again, you can do your own research to see which countries and companies you like. And this is again, a way for you to now diversify your money outside of just the United States, because if you're worried about a potential recession, although United States recession would affect the entire world, obviously the United States would be hit the hardest by a United States recession. So it's a way for you to diversify your money outside of just one economy and one currency. Now, if you are really worried about the health of the economy and the dollar, another way that you can invest your money in this protectionary way, if you don't want to invest your money in other countries and other currencies, would be to invest your money into ETFs that give you exposure to precious metals. This would be something like GLD or IAU. These are ETFs that give you exposure to things like physical gold. And the fifth category of ETFs that you can consider investing in, which I believe would be the highest risk category, would be the innovation side, the companies that are investing in new technologies, new innovation, and a couple ETFs that will give you exposure to this would be the ARK ETFs. And then this last letter would be like ARK-K, ARK-G, ARK-F. This is the ARK Innovation Fund, the ARK Genome Fund, the ARK FinTech Fund, and they have a number of others. ARK is led by Kathy Wood. I have my own money invested into the ARK funds, and these funds have been smacked hard over the last couple of months and the last year. And the reason why it's been hit so hard is because money has been flowing away from these momentum stocks. It's been flowing away from tech stocks into more of value stocks. And part of that has to do through an economic cycle because as interest rates are going up, it's becoming more expensive to borrow money. And as it becomes more expensive to borrow money, people don't want to have their money into these growth, speculative innovation companies because they haven't produced any profits. And we don't know how sustainable some of these companies are. So when interest rates are going up and people are worried about a potential recession, they want to move their money away from these riskier companies and they want to move their money into more of a safe investment, something that will be around a long time. So you have to understand the risks with that because when you go through this type of slowdown in the economy, when you go through interest rates rising, when you go through potential recessions, these are the companies that get hit the absolute hardest. And these are ETFs that give you exposure to a lot of these tech momentum innovation companies. So you have to understand that there's gonna be a lot of risk and a lot of volatility with these ETFs because these are the ones that, well, when things get hit hard, they're gonna be getting hit hard first. Tech companies are the ones that started layoffs first. They're the ones that are already talking about hiring freezes. So these are the companies that, well, are gonna be getting exposure here, but they're the ones that are gonna be hit the first and potentially the hardest through this recession that we might be going into right now. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the shorter clip from the longer videos, here's another clip that I think you'll love. And if you're interested in learning more about how to invest your money in the stock market, our team put together an amazing guide that'll walk you through how to invest your money in the stock market, what the stock market is, different stock market strategies, and how to build wealth in the stock market. This guide is completely free when you sign up for our daily newsletter. So if you wanna read this guide, all you gotta do is click that button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling.